Good evening. So this week's video um, is all about four tips to get really sharp handheld photographs every time. And they're reliable tips that I've used over the years and they always work a treat. Now, before I get any further, I just want to say a massive thank you. I got to 500 subscribers um, a couple of days ago and uh, every view, every like, every sub, means a massive deal to me. So thank you very much. So let's make a start. So tip number one, and that is the use of aperture. So on my camera, when I'm, when I'm doing handheld work, um, the, lots of people have talked about this, but it is a really, really important point. On the back of my camera, um, I normally use um, aperture um, priority or I use manual, depending. And the thing, thing with aperture and um, landscape photography is you really, really want, want to get everything that you possibly can um, in focus. So you need to compromise. So um, there's a couple of things that you can do. First of all, um, you can read up on your lens and find out which lens opening is the, um, is the, is the best for your lens um, in terms of technically which is the sharpest and go within that. But the lens has always got a range. So for instance, this, this lens, which is uh, it's on a Nikon Z7, and it's 24 to 70. Um, it's kind of uh, sharpest area is around about kind of F8 um, to about F10 and um, possibly F11. So you can work within that criteria, but you can also go one stop up from that or one stop down from that, just depending on the amount of available light you've got. Because obviously travel, traveling around with the tripod is um, quite tricky some of the time and you just want to be a little bit freer to move around the space. So I wanted to also mention, I've done another video on um, uh, use of camera settings for landscape photography and I covered this a little bit um, in that and I'll put a link up in the, in the description now. And, but I just wanted to go into this in a little bit more detail to really um, understand this. Now it's not just about getting sharp images, I'm not kind of obsessed with that. It's just to do with having the freedom of being able to shoot handheld and be able to shoot in all different types of environments. Now we're here for sunset, the light's quite low and just really really going to go for it and, um, and show you how to use aperture. Okay so here we are in front of this wonderful scene. Now sorry I've had, to, uh, I've had to turn this up slightly so you can see me rather than the background, but there is that beautiful, those beautiful sun rays starting to happen. Anyway, back to me. Um, <laughs> so, um, so here we go. So when I'm, when I'm using Aperture, I can think about, um, first of all, uh, when, the, when the light is starting to kind of get a bit lower, what we need to think about is, um, is just trying to make uh, as good a compromise as possible. So. Um, my second rule is about use of shutter speed. So shutter speed is really, really important. So generally, even if you've got in-body stabilization, lens stabilization, all those kind of things, I find that you should never really be um, shooting um, under a 30th of a second because the likelihood for um, camera shake and unsharp images is really, really high. So. Um, you can also use a rule that goes with the focal length. So basically, if you're, um, if you're shooting at um, 30 millimeters, then you, you, you use no less than a 30th of a second. If you're shooting at 200 millimeters, you use no less than 200th of a second aperture, um, shutter speed. So that can work quite well. So you don't want to compromise too much on your shutter speeds, but you want the shutter speed to be as low as possible to get it where you want it to be. So I'm gonna take some shots. So I'm gonna zoom into this beautiful sunset. So the next thing I do is shutter release mode. That's a really, um, that's a really, really important one. So um, I can put my, um, my mode of my camera onto continuous high and I bracket it with three exposures. That way you can get three different exposures of the same thing. If you want to use HDR, you can, but it allows you to really think about 
um, your, um, your composition and you don't need to keep on thinking about your exposure all the time. So in terms of the thing that can be sacrificed, the thing that can kind of go, so you can't really, in my book so far, go below a 30th, a 30th of a second, so that's the first problem. Secondly, you don't want to go too unsharp in terms of aperture. You don't really want to go below f6. Um, so in, uh, in the way I photograph anyway. But the one thing you can compromise on is ISO. So everyone always says to go as low as possible. I've said to go as low as possible in many of my previous videos, you know, ISO 100 or 80. But the thing is, is sometimes you just need to um, compromise. And the one place you can compromise always is using ISO. Now, as you get to the very high ISOs, your pictures will start to get loads of noise in them. But I find that anything up to around about the 400 mark means that you still get a really, really good high graze image that you could easily blow up to full size A3 or A2 print. Um, you can use noise reduction on Lightroom as well to bring that down a little bit. And the ISO allows you to stabilize the shutter speed. So you've got, you probably know this anyway, but you've got this thing called the exposure triangle. And the exposure triangle is the balance between the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. But it's getting that exposure triangle right. So the one compromise in handheld is the ISO. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my, I'm going to use about f8. I definitely want more than the 30th of a second for this because there's a real difference in this beautiful scene unfolding here. Um, but I'm going to up my ISO and we'll see how we go. So um, let's take a few shots. So I, I'm going to shoot at 70 mil, 70 mil at the moment. And um, at the moment, actually, um, F8 gives me 250th of a second um, at ISO 125. Now I find that ISO 125 or 160 are my go-to handheld ISOs because it gives you a tiny bit more than say ISO 100, but the degradation in quality is minimal. You barely see it unless you're, unless you're pixel peeping. So let's take some more shots. Um, this whole area of Yuli, Yuli Bari and um, Downham Hill um, and Cam Peak, these are areas that I've photographed in for, for quite a few years and um, really got a kind of special feeling to them. So um, just, to, just to review what we were talking about then, so um, first thing is um, you've got the aperture. So um, the aperture and how the aperture works. Um, some people might say that um, you can go sharp low. Sometimes you can with certain lenses, but most of the time you can't. Um, so you've got that range. Normally it's about two or three stops. So the next thing is basically um, your shutter speed. So no slower than a 30th of a second. You can use the reciprocal rule. So basically your, uh, the millimeter of your lens so if you're zoomed into 50 millimeters, then you go no slower than 50, 50th of a second shutter speed. And that way, you shouldn't get too much camera shake. And then you've got setting your, um, uh, setting your camera to continuous high. The faster you take the shots and the more shots you take, the less likelihood there is of, um, of, of, of movement and softness. And then very lastly, the most important one, compromising on that ISO. Don't be worried to knock it up to ISO 400. I've taken photographs even on ISO 800 and got away with that. I think much higher than that, and you're going into a, a different kind of territory and sometimes it could be a little bit dodgy. But I would say anything up to 400, absolutely fine. Don't even think about it. Anything between 400 to 800, just try and keep the ISO as low as possible. 
and just keep making sure that you've got that shutter speed as high as possible. So that's it, quite a quick one for this week. But the most important thing is these four things, the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, and the shutter release, allow you to be unencumbered, to have more freedom, more creativity with your photography. So as ever, a like and a subscribe means the world to me. And thank you so much for all of you that have done so, so far. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.